Hello guys, hope you're keeping well, welcome back to the channel. First and foremost, apologies um, if there is any flickering on this video. I can see, I think it might be the lights that's above me. So apologies for that if it looks a bit weird watching this, so I hope you can forgive me for that. And also in the background, I apologise for the background, it's not all like studio-ish. Studio um, currently at work, as you most likely know already, it's half past one in the morning. Um, and I've just watched the game back on the computer. And I thought I'd give my views um, on it, um, and we'll, we'll go through it really. And we're not going to hold back on this video because I don't think there's any point in doing so. You know me by now. I'm never going to hold back on how I feel and what I say. You know, since I've come onto the channel as a guest first and foremost, and now as a co-host, I'm not going to change. Um, and so my feelings. Have always been the same towards a certain element of people that are currently involved with the football club, and um, it's not just them. It, the players have to take some responsibility. The coaching staff now. Um, I'm starting to question again some of the tactics. If this is Marcus Shop coaching tonight, um, there would be a lot more upheaval than there has been due to Poya. I think the fact that Poya. He's the second coach this season. He's got a bit more time on his hands. But some of his um, selections, I do not understand. Um, we'll go into that then. We'll go into the selections first and foremost. Starting Clarkador up front. Or in an attacking position. What is that about? Um, he scored one goal for us. During his entire time at Barnsley FC. One goal. So if you look at that statistically. How often do you think you're going to get really a goal threat from Clarkador? Not often. We need goals to win games. We're 23rd in the league. You've got Cole and Adebay Edge on the bench, regardless what you think of those players. They're at least probably more of a threat, naturally, than Clark Adore. Clark Adore was brought in by us from Leeds United as a left-back. As a left-back. So the fact that now we're operating him in a different position, just because he didn't like playing at left-back, speaks volumes again about the recruitment that really... Do we really, you know, did we really know what his favourite position were? And I don't know, but again, the fact that he's anywhere near the starting eleven, with the way that he's been playing this season just speaks volumes. Palmer and Benson, uh, probably the weakest midfield pairing I have seen at Barnsley FC since I started watching us in the early 90s, when I was three or four, and people might go, well, you didn't know. But when you're growing up, you can kind of gather who is a bad midfield pairing, and I've, I've seen some bad ones over the years. And these two um, take it to the next level. Palmer was carried by Alex Moe last season. I'm just going to make that clear. It was carried by Matty James at the start of last season. And yeah, I think he did okay at times. But that is when you're in a successful environment. You generally will go up to the level of players that are around you. For instance, if a player that plays for Wisbury Bridge joins Man City tomorrow... He's generally going to get better because he's around better players every week. Players in training, players in a match day situation. So Palmer got better due to the players that he was playing with. There's no Alex Moat with him this season. And it's clear to see Palmer was meant to be a battling midfielder, a ball winner. A midfield general, something that can break up the play. Where is that this season? Where is that this season? And there's no excuses now. His third year in the first team. There's no excuses. The fact that he came through the academy, let's just get rid of that bullshit. If he's not good enough, he's not good enough. I couldn't care if he's come from Man United, uh, our under-23s, Morecambe, Hamilton Academicals. I couldn't care less. If he's not good enough, I'll say it as it is. And he's out of contract at the end of the season. And we should be saying goodbye to Palmer at the end of the season. We should be saying goodbye to Palmer on Saturday when the window opens, terminating his contract. If we're going to be getting rid of Freezer. He's another one that needs to go. And there's a few of them that need to go. I'm sure we'll be talking about that. There's at least five or six that need to go that are just not good enough. But it's, that's all right. That's all right. We clearly now know where the people that run this football club want us to be. And they do not care about league position. I've said this for a while now. They do not care about league position. They care about money in pockets. Money in pockets. And there's going to be an example of that later in this video that we'll just back that up again. Um... Benson, one of the most underwhelming signings I've seen for a long time. Um, come in, probably the only thing that I've seen him do with note this season is that 
opening day. Assist for Sibic at Cardiff. Another player that's in the wilderness. I don't think he's the answer, but why is he just not even on the bench instead of Jasper Moon? Uh, is at least a lot better than Jasper Moon, in my opinion. Um, but there we are. A player that I can see leave in January again. Um, a player that's going to be unhappy. You know, he's been here nearly three seasons now and Sibic is really not... He's, he's not happy, is he? And um, I can see him leaving. Um, Adebayejo, again, not really lived up to the standards. And there's a theme that's recurring here. There's a theme that's recurring. We've got Devante Cole, summer signing um, that nobody knew about uh, from Motherwell. Apparently our first marquee sign of the summer. Um, left field, I think he's a decent player. But uh, again, I don't think the system suits him whatsoever and he's used haphazardly. So how can he ever really get a regular run of games? And again, it's just pointing to for tonight. You're looking at Morris to get the to get a goal because Leira Seca's form has been out for the last month or so. Um, he's a lad, like I've said, when he first came into the football club, he's going to need at least a season to embed in and to develop his game. Uh, coming from abroad, like with Anderson, like with a couple of other lads that's come from abroad. Uh, so Leira Seca is still young, um, and I think there is potential there, but he's clearly off the mark at the minute. But you've got nobody else to come in. You got Obi Alari, apparently this the, the chosen one from Paul Conway, a free agent that has probably played under under fifty games in his entire career at several football clubs. The last eighteen months of his, his of his career at Standard Liège in Belgium, he was either injured or fell out with the hierarchy there. So that rung alarm bells to me. So we yet signed him, and we were told that first of all it was injury issues; he weren't fit enough. And we were openly lied to by the coach on behalf of the football club. We were told that was told to lie on behalf of the football club by the hierarchy to lie about the situation of Leira Seca and Alari when in fact it was visa issues. And again, another lie that was said to the fans. But then again, that's okay, not a problem. Don't worry about it. Shush, 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 you little sheep. Push you to one side. Will bring something else up. Oh, oh, in fact, it's it's then it's then it's an injury issue. Obi Alari that's then started two substitute appearances for the subtotal of eighteen minutes in four months, and yet again he's not in the starting at eighteen. Sorry, he's not in the eighteen that's been taken to Blackburn today. He's taken out of the match day squads altogether after a. Uh, I think it was might have been Andy Giddings of Radio Sheffield said to Poyerish Bargy, "You do know that the fans are laughing at Alari." Quite comical, really, that then after that, Ashbag is taking him out of the team. Um, a, a play yet again that probably will be on, a, a, I would say, more than five grand a week. And people might go, where are you going with this, Luke? Well, where I'm going is, when you create a culture of hope signings, a culture of hope that something's going to go well, a culture of it might go well, um, it it might not go well, it might be okay. It might not be okay. What do you expect? What do you expect? You, you've, there's no, and I keep going back to it. I cannot see where this club is going currently. Last season, I probably could. With the CEO looking back, that actually kind of knew what he were doing. As much as I dislike Dane Murphy, he's done well at Forest. Whether that's Cooper or the manager, the plays that he's targeting again, Styles being linked to Forest. The, the clearly they know what they're doing. He clearly impressed some people. And with the right money at the helm, he'll probably do okay. Um, we have got, from top to bottom, a culture. For the last, I would say, 13 years, apart from the hecking bottom two or three seasons where he demanded a bit more and didn't get backed. Stendhal didn't get backed. Um, these two managers have not been backed um, and I'll come to why I don't think this other manager as Barg has been backed I don't think is the answer he never was um, I think they should have actually done a bit of uh, due diligence and actually listened to the fans for once and realised that we did need a bit of sensibility after the first decision that they made in the summer was an absolute disaster and yet again they've made another decision This uh, Poyerish Barg by the way is a coach that's won no games in 18 league club games Take away the under-21s for Sweden. At club level, he's won no games in 18. So make that a what you will. Um, 
But going back to what I was saying, the, a culture, an environment where mediocrity is allowed now, as long as we're making money, that is the only thing, in my opinion, that, that matters to this football club. Um, we're, we're trying to find positives out of equalising. We're 23rd in the league. We were. It, it feels very embarrassing when we are jumping up and down due to fortuitous equalising own goal. And yeah, listen, ah, we're happy at 1-1. Because I was like, fucking hell, they could have been four or five in front. But I took it. But we cel we celebrating a we were we were then if we did draw we were celebrating a draw. There were there been elements of the of the fan base that we celebrated that draw. When in fact we need wins. I don't want us to be anywhere near where we are in the league. Some are okay with that, and that's fine. That's your opinion. That's your that's the way that you're built. That's your moral compass. That you're okay with failure. I'm a winner. And when I see my football club being run the way that it is, and it's not just this season. Last season, in my opinion, was nothing to do with the board. It was probably to do with the chief exec. We managed to keep a group of players due to the manager that we brought in, um, due to the fact that there was a good feeling from the place before. And some people might think, well, the board were involved. Uh, well, I think Murphy were involved with the DK transfer. Uh, they took a punt on Carlton Morris, it worked. They took a punt on Britain, it worked. Last season decisions worked, by all means it did work. And so I don't think last season's success necessarily was due to the board. It was due to the players, it was due to the backroom staff, it was due to the manager. And then when a chief exec comes in and more or less shits all over that and says, well, we didn't make no money, so really last season wasn't successful. That was his first week at the football club. It's not really making a good impression. You've got your club captain that's out injured. How convenient. Three days before the transfer window, people might go, don't be so cynical, Luke. It's football, it happens. If Woodrow has gone by this time next week, I wouldn't be surprised at all. And listen, if he stays, he stays. But I cannot see him being here this time at the end of next month, at the end of uh, January, going into February. Sorry, guys. I cannot see it. And I don't blame him if he left one bit. My opinion of him personally has gone down since he said what he said. Um, I'm not going to lie. I weren't impressed with what he said. I felt he could have articulated his words a lot better. Um, but to call more or less an entire fan base fickle, you're the club captain. You've got, you know, some things might have been taken out of context by some of the fan base towards you personally, and I don't agree with that, and I've said that. But we are allowed to critique your performances, especially when they're not being good enough. And you're the club captain. You should have more, more standards for yourself. The younger lads will be looking up to you. You're 26 now. You're one of the senior pros at the club. You know, to then come out and say that the fan base is the problem, to take no responsibility in your performances whatsoever. It's all the fans' fault. Why you've not that? Why you've scored three goals all season? Just says everything. Um, Helic coming off again. There's no 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 surprise that he comes off and we concede three minutes later. Just didn't surprise me because. Mentally, have we started to think, fucking hell, he's gone off, we're going to concede? Subconsciously, that could happen. Have Blackburn then thought their best defender's gone off? We'll put foot on gas. Maybe it's a coincidence. But when you've got Jasper Moon coming on, and Jasper, if you watch this, I doubt you will, but if, if you or your family or your friends watch this, I'm saying this with the dearest of empathy and sympathy towards you, I feel that you've been thrown in the deep end, mate, because you are not ready for championship football. You might think that you are, but your performance is stay otherwise. You should have been sent out on loan to a League Two team this season. You should have gone to a Scunthorpe or a Bradford, somewhere like that, to play men's football, to get experience. And then even next season, gone first half of next season to a Donk Week. You, you, probably, you could probably come to us, mate, because we're getting relegated anyway, so you could probably then play for us next season in League One. But what I'm saying is for this season at the start... We should have looked to have got you lead two games and got some confidence, but you've been been thrown into the deep end um, just for the pure fact that you're young and they're seeing the dollar signs and the pound signs and think that if you're half decent, you get sold for a fee um, because you're a young product at the academy and that's what they'll sell it as. You're hopefully thinking, oh, we can we can find the next John Stones. And that's, that's what they'll be hoping and it's not worked. Your confidence is shattered. And then so every time you play, fans doubt your ability and then you you doubt your ability. Players will then think, 
you know what, we're going to focus on this lad because he's a, he's a young lad, he's, he's, he's naive, he's, he's, he's inexperienced, he's, he's not ready for this level, and they'll they'll pounce on your mistakes. So, you know, it, I don't want it to come across like I'm against him. I'm not at all. I feel sorry for the lad. I think he's been really mismanaged. And there's been a lot of plays that's been mis mismanaged this season. Um, Styles probably one of the bright lights for me. Probably one of his best performances of the season. Again, another player that could be leaving. Celtic have been linked with him. Forrest have been leaving with him. Linked with him, sorry. And and listen, he's not been the player from last season. Of course he's not. But who has? Who has? You know, you can't blame one player. You know, people might think I'm very anti-Woodrow, for instance. I'm not. I'm dis I'm disappointed more against his comments. Um, Styles, his, his body language is being poor. But then again, why why would it not be? Playing with it with, with certain set of players that walk into the side. You got Will Ondermark who can't even get into the eighteen. I mean, what is he doing wrong? You must Palmer must be playing like prime Andrea Perlo, and Benson must be playing like you know fucking prime Francesco Totti in training to get into that starting eleven. Because I don't know what merits it. Because those performances on the pitch that I see in a match day environment are completely different to what clearly Poyer sees in training. Unless he's got unless they've got pitches of him that's in compromising positions. I don't know. That he he don't want them to leak. That's the only other thing I can think. Um, but the the club's a mess. The club's a mess. And well done to those lads and and ladies that went over to Lancashire tonight. It's not far away. Yeah, I get that. But it's near Christmas, and we've took over seven hundred fans to Blackburn. You know they're a good side. Don't get me wrong. And let me just all all credit to Blackburn. They're a good they're a good club. They've come out the other end of a bad situation. They got relegated. They've stabilised. They, they chose a manager that's got clearly good experience at this level in Mowbray. Been at a higher level with Celtic, obviously, in Europe and, you know, in the SPL and won major titles up there. You know, very good manager, in my opinion. Knows the game inside out. And, and you know, they've obviously got a lot of money behind him with the Armstrong transfer to Southampton in the summer. You know, but they've got some good crude loan spells. You know, they've got players that's coming to form. Brereton Diaz, obviously, you know, is one of the main players outside of the Premier League at the minute. He's on fire, 20 goals for the season. They were always going to be a threat. It were never going to be easy. The third in the league, joint second now with Bournemouth on goal difference, just below them on goal difference. So they're, they're, you know, they're probably the informed team in the Championship currently. So it were always going to be hard. But we've just gone there and, we, you know, we've like laid on a side like a submissive cat, just like allowing herself just to get beat because we're, ex again, the mentality is completely wrong. We're expecting to lose every game. And like I've said before, when you lose games regularly, it becomes a bad habit. Same as winning games. When you're winning games regular, it becomes a good habit. We've got into the habit of losing. I can't see his next winning a game probably till Barrow in the cup. And even then, Barrow might come here and think, you know what, these are doing shit in the league. We've got nothing to lose. Championship team, you know, we'll go there, get everything that we've got. And, you know, that's not a foregone conclusion. That's probably the most winnable game that's coming up. Notts Forest next. Again, another team pushing for the playoffs since Steve Cooper's coming. Completely turned their season around. They were below us when we played them last, and now they're above us by a long way. It goes to show you, people that know what they're doing at football, managerial, top level, decision-making level, compared to us, that just seem to go on a whim and a hope, and because it's cheap, because it's foreign, we think it's going to work again. This, this experiment has clearly not worked. It didn't work with Marcus Shop. It needed some sensible decisions in the summer. They didn't come. It needed some shrewd recruitment in the summer. That didn't happen. It needed some stability and sustainability for the next couple of seasons just to get us consolidated after what had happened since losing the chief executive. We lost his most experienced defender. We lost his club captain. We lost his club coach and then his backroom staff, two or three of them. All in the space of a few weeks. We lose Connor Chaplin to Ipswich on a whim. Did really matter to them. I, I, again, I can't still understand that. And um, tonight we've now lost Herbie Kane for the season. Um, it's come out that Carl Robinson's been in local media in Oxford, stating that the club have agreed a fee with Oxford um, for Kane to stay till the end of the season. So that loan is now extended fully till the end of the season. We did have a recall clause, I assume, that we could have called him back on New Year's Day to, to join back with us. So then it would have been a half-season loan, but Oxford have paid a fee to Barnsley. Um for Kane to stay to the end of the season. They've just gone into fifth in the playoffs in League One. And Kane, it's a no no brainer, is it, for him? You know, he's doing well, he's playing well, he's just got a player of the month for them for November. So he's clearly in form, he's happy. 
and there's always been a player there in my opinion. I think he were underutilised last season under Ishmael due to the system. He was one of the probably the the players that was the you know to, to a detriment of his own ability last season because the system that we employed under Ishmael didn't suit Kane. But I felt that this season we should have kept him and not let him go out on loan and really use him in the starting eleven. Especially when we're obsessed about getting a more technically better coaching. Yeah, we've got Marcus shopping, uh, and then Poyeres Bargi, and you know they're the technically better coaches that we brought in. Yeah, good decisions, guys. Good decisions, and yet we let Herbie Kane go out on loan to Oxford. I felt, you know what, we've lost Mowat. You know, could we keep Kane and get a little experienced midfielder in? You know, a box to box midfielder, a like for like for Mowat. Yeah, we probably could, but we didn't. And, you know, Kane is there with uh, Oxford going for a promotion push for the second half of the season. And I hope it goes well for you, Irby, because you, you're joining a club that's at least got a little bit more ambition than us, which is to play championship football next season. And now, in my opinion, it's um, probably damage limitation now. We're seven points off. I can't see the, see the next win. People might go, well, it's only two wins and a draw. Well, they've got to happen in the space of three games. If we keep losing, the gap's going to go bigger. Derby's getting closer and closer. They will recruit in January, make no mistake about that. They'll get some free agents in. The, the lure of still joining a big club like Derby with Wayne Rooney at the helm. They've still got some good players there at Derby. Good fan base that's motivated. They can see us. We're an easy target to approach at the minute. They might go, they might go down, but they'll go down fighting. We're going down with a whimper at the moment. And I think he's the first coach since John McSeveny in 1954 to not win any of his first seven games. So, Poirier's Bargy, the promised one that was meant to be coming in. And listen, I would probably bought him by the hope. I think there was anything that could have got me to hope about changing the fortunes this season. After we sacked shop and brought Ash Bargy in, I probably got sucked into it too. After the job that he did with Sweden under 21s, but I'm like, you know, it doesn't really matter who we brought in. We could have brought in Mourinho, we could have brought in Conte, Guardiola. Would it have been the same? Obviously, that's hypothetical, but what I'm saying is the players are just not good enough, either. But the decisions that the hierarchy that this football club are continuously making, going back to the summer and going back to the managerial appointments, it does not make sense. The players have got to hold themselves up as well. Um, the professionals at the end of the day. But also, at the same time, I feel that they're being shortchanged. I feel that we still need two or three experienced players to come in. Someone on the right-hand side of centre-back, where Sol we used to play. Um, we need two midfielders we could have brought Kane back but that's not going to happen so we'll probably bring in a midfielder we'll buy him and then we'll have a midfielder surplus um, we need a striker if Woodrow's going we need a centre back if Helix's going um, there's others that could be linked apologies for that it's just uh, my work camera we've got Collins that could be linked with other clubs you've got Styles. Um, yeah it's not looking great at the moment the level of apathy I have towards this football club is probably the lowest it's ever been. Um, I was expecting us to lose, so I prepared for us to lose. So when Blackburn scored, I didn't get angry, I didn't get upset. I, I didn't get sad, I didn't get frustrated. It just happened, it just happened. And I watched a video earlier, actually, Norman Remington. Um, it was on the official club Facebook channel on their page from 2014 and um, Danny Wilson was the manager then we went down that season didn't we um, and Rimo was still there working for the club and I'm like I've not got characters like that at the football club have we now you know and you, you know you always go through generations where you'll get people that's from the town and that and I get that you're not always going to get that but I just think him and Patrick will be looking down on us now and thinking, what the hell's going on? Um, yeah. I, I don't know what to say apart from the fact that I just feel that it just feels that this club is slowly fading. And I don't think if we do get relegated, it's a, people might go, it's a long way, it's a long way, have, have faith, keep the faith, all that bullshit. I've watched us for four months now, of this season, there's nothing that I can see, unless we rig games, and there's a miracle, we, we actually recruit players, and I don't think they'll back the manager, I don't, because that decision we have became is the first 
indictment that they were they will not back the manager because if they wanted to back the manager, they would have brought Kane in on New Year's Day back from Oxford and said, listen, we've got a couple of lads out on loan. Do, do you want us to bring him? You know, should we keep an eye on him? Do you want to bring him back? You know, so for, so for Poyer over Christmas, he could have been looking at two or three lads that's out on loan various places. You're looking at like Sir Schmidt, maybe. I, I don't rate him, but, you know, just I'm, I'm just saying in theory, you're looking at um, Kane, you're looking at one of the lads from Denmark, possibly, one of young lads to come in just into onto the bench or something like that. And Poyer might be going, yeah, yeah, well, you know, yeah, that's good, thank you. As, alongside three or four loans, alongside three or four permanents, because I think that's what we need. We need seven signings, and that's my opinion. Two strikers, two midfielders now, uh, a, a left-back, a right centre back, a right back. M mistake if I'm forgotten, but that's what we need. But we won't get that. Um, and the fact that they've let Kane stay to the end of the season, when they should be backing the manager and bringing him back, th they've not backed him. People might go well. It, uh, people might my theory of backing a manager. It doesn't matter if if players come in. It's also players that go and players that are out on loan. If you're not bringing them back. Unless Kane stated, I don't want to come back to you and he don't want to play for us, but I can't see that. I can just see us accepting the first offer that's been made by Oxford, which we clearly have done. And it's still only now, the 30th of December. So there was still, at the time of, of that decision-making happening, two and a half days till the official window opens and we're still doing business to the detriment of the football club, the interest of the football club. I think Irby Kane coming back would have made us better. It might not have been the answer. It might not have kept us up. Just give us a fucking chance, and they've not. I'm, one player's not going to change at all, but you can see Morris has come back in, obviously, with a bit more of a goal threat. Um, he looks like he wants to be there. He, you know, he's somebody that we can look towards. Um, I like Morris. Kane coming back in, would he freshen things up in the midfield? Maybe, yeah. He, he probably needs two, another two lads alongside him there. Um, but it would have been better than just not doing anything at all, which is what we've done, and we've just allowed him to stay out on loan. I, I don't understand that decision at all. It makes no sense whatsoever, um, except that money, 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 um, as always. But, yeah, I don't know where we go from here. Um, we'll see, obviously, what happens over the next month. It'll be very interesting. We'll be obviously putting content up. I'm sure Neil will be giving his thoughts about tonight's performance at Ewood Park. If you guys have been, let me know what you think. Um, but yeah, another inept, soft, um, gutless performance. And I'm going to say that because I think when the chips are down, you're looking for people to stand up and fight for your corner. We're in the trenches now. Do or die in it. And Blackburn, were, like I've said earlier in the video, it we're always going to be a tough game. We're probably always likely to lose, I get that. But there's a way of doing it. And we didn't go and take the game to him. Um, I knew for a fact at 2-1 when they scored the second goal that we we're never going to come back and equalise again. I just knew that. You could see the heads, the, the, the reaction of the goal at 2-1. Heads go straight away, game over then. Game over. Um, psychologically, we were never going to come back and equalise twice. Um, never mind, score twice in a game. So I didn't think we were going to equalise twice. Um, so... Where do we go from here? Well, the lads are going to look at the sound in the mirror, but also those people that run the football club have. But whether they will do, I don't know. The more, like I said on the tweet that I did, the more the more bothered about putting Lebanese flat, flatbreads on the uh, club menu to make them look like the more, you know, hot cuisine, more a la carte menus. That's the, what they're more bothered about at the moment and harassing fans um, to take lap floor tests when we fucking know to take lap floor tests, just leave us the fuck alone. Um, they're more bothered about that than just actually sorting out the current issues at the football club, which is we are under under underperforming. We're underwhelming. We're not good enough, and it just stinks from top to bottom. Um, so yeah, I've had enough. I've had enough, really. I'll of course I'll keep going to the games, the league games in particular at home. To spend time with my dad first and foremost, um, to get out of the house. Of course, I still love the football club with every fibre in me. Um, but I'm prepared now for what's coming. And if we go down, we deserve it. We deserve everything that we're getting at the minute. 
because other clubs that are properly run, you can see that the results are there to see. Your Blackpools this season, your Lutons recruited properly. Similar size clubs to us, I would say. I would say in, in some aspects, bigger than, than Blackpool, for instance. Obviously, they've been in the Premier League recently more than us, but they've spent more time in the lower leagues recently. But the way that they've recruited is a lot better than us because they wanted to stay in this league. It's clear this season was never about consolidating. And it just, it just what other club could go from fifth, from 180 minutes from Premiership football, losing everything backroom staff-wise, losing your club captain, losing your most experienced centre defender, not replacing them, not replacing your coach with anybody of calibre, not using where we finished as a, as a springboard to push on and consolidate for the next two or three seasons. No, we get most cheapest option in from Austria. He last 16 games. He's clearly not good enough because he were never good enough in first place. You make him scapegoat for fans. You'll get away with it initially. But now they gain everything, and fully deservedly so. Poyer, I never thought he would answer. I will, I will never Poyer in it first place. So if I'm Poyer out, I will never Poyer in. I will probably just hoping that it would work deep down. And there's a bit of me that my my weakness is. I'm probably thinking if I say he's not good enough and he's not even coached us yet, and it, and it turns out that he's good, then it'll be me that obviously looked looked daft. So I kind of thought, well, you know what, I've got to give him a chance. But deep down, I knew it was never going to work. I knew it was never going to work. You know, there's a reason why he never got called up to big teams in Scandinavia, like your Copenhagen's and your Molders and your teams like that. There's a reason why he had to go to Sweden on the 21s national side. There's a reason why he got sacked at Gothenburg. There's a reason why he's won no games in 18, because he's not good enough. And this is what we keep harping on about on this channel. We keep attracting a calibre of coach that are not good enough at the championship. Ishmael, it worked last season. It worked. But with every good appointment you make, you make two or three shit ones. And that's what it is. There's no... And it goes back to what I've been saying all along. There's no like certainty with anything. It's just like going from one thing to another, just open gambling, open gambling. If it works, it works. It's great. But as somebody said, if it if it if it's a gamble in it and it's and it works, then obviously fantastic. You will look great. But if it don't work and it and it's a gamble that you make, you look absolutely idiots. And the the clubs are laughing stock at the moment. We'd be bottom of the league if it weren't for Derby. Been an admin, and that still might happen come the end of the season. So anyway, guys, it might be in a depressing video, but I'm not going to sit here and be like, yay, you know, like, I can't do that. It's not in me. It's not in me. I can't do that. I'm not going to change. I'm not going to change. I wish some people would be more like that. That's out they, but they're not. And that's their own, that's their own decision. But my decision is, and my, my, my feelings are, I've got to say it as it is, because I'm a fan. Not a presenter, I'm a fan. And so I will say how I feel. You might not like everything that you hear. You might get offended by everything that you hear. You might not like me as a person. Couldn't care less first and foremost. But at least that's your opinion. Yeah, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. But at least just know that I care about this football club and I love this football club. And it means everything to me. Everything to me. Deep down it does. And the fact that I've been pushed away, I feel I'm being pushed away slowly but surely from loving the club that I know, from loving the club that the community is built around. As everyone knows, when Barnsley's doing well, the town's thriving. And vice versa, when the town's thriving, Barnsley's doing well. One of those communities, we need the club to be doing well as a town. And, um, yeah. League One, it might be what we need to come back up, I don't know, but there's no assurances that we'll even come back up. Because again, it's a rebuilding job and we're talking about League One and it's still December. Very depressing indeed. Um, but for now, two defeat at Blackburn. Very disappointed, um, but not surprised either. I'm just used to it, but I'm just used to just this shit now. I'm just being used to being abused by this regime that thinks it's okay. And if you think it's just Barnsley, look at Ostend, see where they are in the league. Look at Nancy in France, see where they are in the league. Look at Esbjerg in Denmark, see their recent performances. And also look at what their fans of their clubs are thinking about them, about Pacific Media Group, about the circus that own our football club. And see what their comments are, because they're very similar to mine. Might be in different languages, but the theme is all the same. The essence and the soul of their club has been ripped out, all in the essence of making money. And yes, football clubs 
are a business now, I get that. It's becoming more financial orientated, I totally get that. But there's a way of doing it. There's a way of doing it. Doing it on the fucking cheap and just pocketing everything that you earn and giving nothing in return to the fans. Especially for a club like us. I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm not going to say what, what's next for what we should do as a fan base. I think we need to get his voices heard. And I'm not insinuating that there needs to be protests. I'm not insinuating that there needs to be a chance for him to leave. I'd be all for that because I never wanted him here in the first place. Um, But I'm not going to incite something and get accused of you're the, you're the troublemaker, you're the troublemaker, you're a shit fan and all this stuff that I'll get from 5% Club. But what I'm going to say is, fans, if you've got an opinion, don't be scared to say it. Just because somebody might disagree with you. If that's how you feel, fucking say it. See you later.